video laryngoscopy assisted bronchoscopic intubation. Again, my name is Joffer Oda and uh, I practice anesthesiology and uh, anesthesiology critical care. A, a little note about the title, as anesthesiologists, we're used to calling this fiber optic intubation. We don't really use fiber optic scopes uh, very much uh, anymore, especially with the uh, advent of the new disposable bronchoscopes. And so hence the title bronchoscopic intubation. But um, I think we all know what what I'm referring to here. Uh, and if not, we'll, we'll, uh, you'll hopefully learn about it. Just a quick disclaimer, um, the techniques shown and the views expressed are mine uh, and only mine. They do not necessarily reflect the views of Verathon. Um, you should always refer to your operations and maintenance manuals for your GlideScope products. So now I have my, my mannequin here, who we affectionately refer to as Darth Vader. And uh, I'm going to use my, um, my GlideScope blade. We're going to insert midline the mannequin. It makes it always tough when you're trying to intubate a mannequin, but there's my, my um, epiglottis and my view of the glottic opening. Uh, now that I have my view that I like, I can position it however I want. I have my view, and I'm going to ask my assistant to take, take over. And once his hand is there, I'm going to actually move his hand exactly how I want. And there we go. So now, I've, now that I'm ready to um, pass the tube, let's say I'm going to pass the tube. I've got it in view here, but let's, again, this is just a mannequin, but if we were to uh, uh, assume that the, the glottic opening was too anterior to actually direct my tube there, I'm gonna stop right here. I'm gonna pull my stylet out, and I'm gonna ask my assistant to take the tube. And again, I can position the tube however I want once we're there. Now, I'm going to take my, my fiber, uh, my uh, disposable bronchoscope here. Once I plug it in, I have a great um, uh, split screen image here. And I'm going to insert through the tube. And again, now I'm not looking at the bronchoscope. I don't care what that's showing me. I want to look at the video laryngoscope side here. And I'm going to, pull the tube back a little bit, I'm going to guide my scope right through the cords. And again, I'm looking with the video laryngoscope. I don't care what the bronchoscope is showing me right now. Now that I'm through the cords, I'm going to take the tube from my assistant and I'm going to advance it. And once I get to the cords, I'm going to use a twisting motion to just get it gently through the cords. And then once it's there, now I would inflate my, inflate my uh, uh, pilot balloon, uh, or inflate my cuff, sorry. And then now if I wanted to, I could continue with a bronchoscopic examination of the lungs or just the trachea or whatever it is that I, that, and you can see the image quality here is great, which is, um, is just another reason why I like this scope, but you can see here as we, and, uh, and there you have it. So now at this point, I would pull out my, my tube. We can disconnect here and then we'll remove the blade. And now it's that, uh, it's that easy. Again, this is um, a really helpful, powerful technique when you have um, a difficult airway, when you have a great view with your GlideScope blade, but because of that hyperangulated uh, shape of the, of the blade, you just can't get your tube anteriorly to the view that you've achieved with your GlideScope. Um, and so when you use two people as well, it allows one person to focus on one task, which is holding the, holding the, the, the blade in place and getting that view, which is critical. And then the other person can focus specifically on the bronchoscope, bronchoscopic portion. Um, and when you don't have to multitask, you don't have to have um, the ability to do two separate things with each hand. You can focus on um, each task and it, and it makes for um, a very successful uh, chance of intubation, a, very, uh, a higher success rate when you're intubating difficult airways. Why not miss out tube stylet stage and preload bronchoscope with the tube and enter bronchoscope like a stylet? So 
Uh, good question. Um, you absolutely could do that. So the, the, the way in which I use this, so if I had an anticipated difficult airway, I would do that. The, the way I, I use this technique most often is I won't, it won't be planned because we almost never know when we're going to encounter. I mean, we always, all, almost always have unanticipated difficult airways. In that situation, it'll be because I've already, uh, I planned on using a glide scope. I've gotten my glide scope view. I will attempt to intubate and I just can't get the tube to where it needs to go. And so at that point, I'll say, okay, let me plug in a bronchoscope here. Um, and uh, so, and then I would pull out the stylet and go through it that way. So that's, that's the reason for that. You absolutely could preload it and use it that way um, if you were planning to use it from the beginning. Um, but because it's usually unanticipated, uh, I will go to it after the fact. Looks ideal for nasotracheal intubations. Absolutely. Absolutely. I've used it uh, that way as well. And it is just, it's, it's fantastic. What about double lumen with an anterior larynx? Um, so uh, what about a double lumen, yeah, double lumen tube placement is glide scope. Glidescope is too big of a pro profile for most. Um, I, I like the Glidescope for double lumen tube placement, and I, and I do use that, um, especially for um, if at the end of the case I'm exchanging a double lumen tube to a single uh, lumen regular ET tube, I will always use a Glidescope. The B-Flex comes in a uh, three sizes. It comes in a, a 5.0, which is kind of your standard size, a 5.8, which is... Uh, very large and has, or it's not very large, but it, it has a very large suction um, uh, channel, uh, working channel, and so ability to suction. But it also comes in a 3.8 millimeter, um, which is perfect for uh, double lumen tubes. And um, so it can be used for that type of situation. Is it easier to use small flexible endoscope for anterior larynx with glide scope than using a disposable scope? Um, I I like the disposable scope because it's so quick, easy, readily available. There's also a 3.8 uh, size B-Flex. So it's, that's the smallest scope that I want to use um, just because I, you know, I think it becomes too, um, too much like a wet noodle if it's anything you know, smaller than that. Um, on the Glidescope core, we have our, you know, when we have them in ROR, we have the, the Glidescope handle as well as the uh, the bronchoscopes, the the, the B flex disposal scopes, just hanging right on the, the the tower with it. As you can see, they're right here in the back. This is the B flex, and then here's my handles. Oh, oh, so oh, if I have yeah. a view with my handle, and I just quickly need to go to the B flex, I can have anybody pull it out of the package, connect it, and I have it ready in ten seconds. And that's why I like that. 